This is the third of three videos where I'm talking about functions and their graphs. First video we talked about the zeros of functions and the definition of functions. And in that video I talked mostly about parabolas. Second video was all about parabolas. This video I'm talking about parabolas again. Why? Because parabolas, aside from lines, are the most commonly tested function on the ACT, both graphically and algebraically. So there's really four things that we need to talk about as far as how you move a graph around, how you change its shape. Um, two of them I think are more important than the other two, and I want to start with those two. So y equals x squared is your sort of your standard parabola, sort of grafted up here loosely. And if I plug in 0 for x, remember x is our input into function, 0 squared will be 0, right? 0 will spit out the 0. But if I start to change things around a little bit, let's say instead of y equals x squared, I have y equals x squared plus 2. Well, in this case, when I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to have 0 squared is 0, plus 2 is 2. The vertex is no longer 0, 0. The vertex is now 0, 2. It doesn't change horizontally, but vertically it shifts up. So what's going on here? Well, you'll notice that the 2 is outside of the function. The parent function, that is, I guess. So if it's outside, meaning that what's happening to the 2 is not the same thing that's happening to the x, or maybe it's easier to understand if I flip that. What's happening to the x, the square, is not happening to the 2. It's going to go up or down. Now, if it goes... If it's positive, it's going to go up. If it's negative, it goes down. So it kind of comports. It kind of goes along with the signs, right? Plus, well, that makes sense. Negative, whoop. Next would be inside the function. Let's say instead of x squared plus 2, I have y equals parentheses x plus 2 quantity squared. Now we're inside the function. The same thing that's happening to the x is happening to the 2. It's being squared. So when I plug in my 0 for x, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. What I've really done is I've shifted the vertex left and right, right? And this is a little bit hard for a lot of people to get, but it, it's going to go opposite the sign. So it's plus 2, but I'm going to actually move in the negative direction. So it's going to look a little like this. Oops, I meant, I meant to use green, I used black, sorry. Just pretend that that second parabola is green. So that will shift it horizontally opposite its sign. Sort of kind of green it up a little bit. Okay. Those are the two I think that are most important to know. Very occasionally you kind of need to know them. Um, but you can work around it with your calculator, right? Uh, they can be huge time savers and huge helps. Like it's so great if you can just eyeball a quadratic equation or an absolute value. Because absolute value, square roots, all this stuff works the same. Even um, the trig functions kind of work this way too. Check out that, that stuff on those, the graph of trig functions. It's really helpful. Not a big topic, but this stuff in there I think is very helpful. Um, if you can eyeball these questions, just say, oh, well, I mean, obviously I'm moving the vertex down three and I'm moving it this way too. Then you can solve a problem by sight reading, literally, if you get good enough at it. So... Those are the two that I think are most important. Now, the other two are, one of them is one you remember. And if I, if I was worried that you guys probably weren't remembering it, I would say it's as important as the other two. But just remember that when I flip the sign, so instead of y equals x squared, let's say I have y equals negative x squared, I turn my parabola from a cup to an umbrella, right? I would flip my absolute value sign, or my absolute value v, I don't know what that was. That wasn't very good, though. I would flip my root. Everything would get flipped over. I invert it. Okay. Still a function. Still passes that vertical line test, but it's just flipped over. And finally, if I put a... Let's change colors. How about this pink one I have in my hand? If I put a coefficient in front of the x, well... What happens when I plug in uh, 0 for, for x? Nothing. It still spits out a 0. But when I plug in 1 for x, over here it's 1 squared is 1, so I'd have 1 and then I'd negative 1, right? Because of the negative square root. But on this one, I'm going to double it. So it's literally going to go up 
twice as fast. So it's going to be much steeper. It's going to turn from like a cup looking sort of thing to more of a knife blade. If I have a coefficient that's under one, let's say y equals one half x squared, then the opposite will happen. It'll turn into more of a gentle bowl sort of shape. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the ACT example for this full screen. And you'll see that for the most part, these questions are can be fairly easy. Although I will, I won't lie, this ACT example is definitely not the hardest one I could have chosen. Okay, this is a pretty basic ACT example, and it's nice enough to both give you the graph of the function as well as the equation. And though we, we can just use the equation alone, which is a somewhat common setup to find the, uh, the vertex of the parabola. So if the, it's x plus 3, that's going to be a negative 3 for our x-coordinate and a plus 2 for our y-coordinate. Of course, we didn't even need to do that, right? Because we can just read it. So we're going down 3 units. Well, we're going down from 2 to like a negative 1. So anything that's not below the x-axis, just really quickly, I can knock off. Boom, 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 boom. Boy, this was a simple question. It won't always be that easy. But I wanted to use this one because it also gives me an opportunity to talk about uh, some of these other equations and what's going on here, just to give you more exposure to what these would look like if you took them from graph to equation. So look at letter, uh, letter D here. We've got zero on the, uh, on the Y shift. So we've got maybe a X plus six squared. Boy, that was sloppy. Sorry for the writing. And then on the on E, we've got, it looks like they, it's basically this is reflected across the X axis, or Y axis rather. It looks like we've got, well, we're in the positive 3, so that's X minus 3 squared for the Y, plus 2. That goes there. Then this is just an unmodified parabola probably. And up here, this one's tougher to read because the scale's bigger. I'm going to say that's uh, X minus 3 still. But it looks like we maybe shifted the graph up instead, because that looks like it's probably sitting at about a 5. And then, of course, this one would be uh, x plus 3, a right answer, squared minus 1. So if you were actually doing this problem algebraically, which you, I've never seen this since we actually have to do it this way, you would just subtract 3 from, out the, uh, from the one that's not in the parentheses to do it. That's another way you could handle it. Again, relatively straightforward. This is somewhat similar to stuff you'll see in the graph of trig functions. Relatively minor topic, but if you're looking for a really top score, definitely check it out. Even if you're looking for a pretty good score, make sure you have enough minor topics to get you there.